Well, I'm going to give the mic to Sarah and Earl. Um, I'll be back later to go over things, but enjoy the session and take it away. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, good afternoon or good morning, uh, wherever everyone is at here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Earl. I'm a senior product specialist here at Jane. Uh, so I'm actually one of those folks on the front lines there answering your questions through chat, email, or phone call. So we may have actually even had a conversation about, you know, anything and everything you need help with uh, regarding Jane. So that could be billing, that could be, you know, anything else there related to uh, using Jane. Um, and I'll just kind of let Sarah introduce herself here as well. Thanks, Earl. Uh, I'm Sarah Hansen. I'm our director of billing here at Bushido. Um, and I have a few of our Jane app software specialists with Bushido billing in the audience as well. And I just want to say thanks to Jane uh, for having us here today. Perfect. No, I appreciate having you and your team here, Sarah. Um, we decided to kind of combine forces here and kind of demystify and make switching clearinghouses a little bit less scary and spooky here, kind of keeping in theme with Halloween as well. Um, uh, we're, we're kind of here. We kind of work together to build this step-by-step -step guide, which we'll kind of go over here today. Um, one thing to note is that since this, this is recorded, you also have this recording for yourself later on. And we'll also send you folks a little checklist at the end of this uh, as well as follow-up. So um, you don't have to yeah, scramble and record uh, everything here on your end. We'll, we'll kind of get you guys all covered here. All right, so let's go here. All right, so it's kind of like jump right in here. Let's kind of break down those steps uh, for a clearinghouse transition so that, you know, it won't disrupt the clinic's workflow and cash flow and, you know, less stress there for, for that switch. Um, one thing to note for this um, webinar here or chat that I'll be mainly talking about switching from one clearinghouse to ClaimMD since that's Jane's kind of recommended solution here. Um, but with that being said, all of the kind of points that we would make here today, that's all universal for switching any clearinghouses here. Um, speaking of kind of claim MD, you can kind of, uh, there's multiple kind of price points and plans you can choose. And since everyone here is using Jane, you'll also get a 10% discount code if you select Jane as your vendor. So kind of reduces the, the price there and the load for the clinics. Um, but, you know, as mentioned there, uh, you can still use Office Ally, tries that or availability if you're already using that or considering using one of those clearinghouses uh, in the future. And note for those past three that I just mentioned, that's for non-integrated billing. Uh, one reason why we do recommend ClaimMD is that is fully integrated within Jane. So kind of lessening the, the steps there that uh, clinics would have to take to submit claims. All that being said as well, it's actually even when you kind of choose to sign up for a clearinghouse, uh, right at that point of signing up, you don't really want to say goodbye to your clearinghouse, the old one that you're using just yet. Uh, we do want to make sure that um, you kind of cover all your bases and go through all of your enrollments uh, with that new clearinghouse. Uh, and then so that way your cash flow again does not get dis disrupted there. And um, you, you, every, all your reporting and things of that nature stays uh, accurate there uh, up until you kind of switch uh, and is approved for switching your clearinghouses there. Here's kind of a quick slide on the price points that, that ClaimMD offers and with that 10% discount there as well. And, you know, ClaimMD does a great job of serving clinics with different needs there in accordance to these uh, pricing plans. Once you've selected your clearinghouse, that, that would be step one, kind of whichever clearinghouse you want to switch with, uh, switch towards rather. Then step two here is actually doing those EDI, ERAs, and eligibility enrollments. Um, so EDI, again, if we're not we're unfamiliar with that term, that is the process of submitting claims electronically through Jane or EHR towards a clearinghouse. And then ERAs is the process of receiving the EOBs uh, electronically from your clearinghouse and, you know, into Jane, either integrated with ClaimMD or otherwise with one of the other clearinghouses we utilize, you can utilize with Jane. Specifically in ClaimMD, at the point of sign up or once you get access to your account, you can actually head to your managed account and prov provide an enrollment section. And you'll notice that ClaimMD actually kind of kickstarts this process for you. Um, there's a 
In terms of enrollments for both EDI and ERAs, it really varies per payer insurer that you utilize. Um, so you'll have to kind of check in with the steps there that uh, ClaimMD mentions and um, go forth from there depending on um, what is required. Um, Sarah here, I'll leave you to this to kind of jump in and see if you've got anything else to add. Yeah, thanks, Earl. Um, so another big perk of ClaimMD, like Earl mentioned, is that they kind of kickstart that process for you of those enrollments. Um, so whenever you go to that provider enrollment section, they'll have a list of all the enrollments you need to do. What's super important to note is whenever you pull those up, there's a quick, easy button that says complete enrollment, but that actually doesn't complete your enrollment. Um, a lot of the steps will require um, you to potentially log into other portals, such as like Zealous or Change Healthcare, maybe Availity, different portals like that where you'll actually have to do the enrollment through there. Many other ones have forms that you need to complete or even just sign. Uh, ClaimMD can complete most of those forms for you just by filling in their information. Um, so whenever you see those pop up, that's kind of one common thing we see is people just want to hit the complete button, think it's done. Um, but if you don't actually complete or sign that form and submit it, then the enrollment actually isn't completed. So it's super important to read all the steps um, on those before you hit complete. Right, perfect. Thanks for jumping in there, Sarah. Um, I did see a little uh, chat here from Michelle mentioning something about UK remittance or re remits. Uh, this this question there, uh, I don't have any personal experience. I don't know about you, Sarah. Do you have any kind of experience with UK there? I feel like it's kind of state dependent, but I'll just speak to that. Yeah, UK sounds like a Minnesota state, so or a Minnesota insurance because that's what we had. Um, but yes, you should be able to get the UK remittances through there. Um, it would depend on which ones you might be struggling with, because I know in some areas, you care is Medicare and Medicaid, um, or they just have their commercial plans too. So that might be a little bit more of a specific um, question that we can help you look at. Uh, Michelle, if you want, um, if you want to private chat me your email, I could actually get you connected with Laura. She's in this group too. Um, and she could probably get you pointed in that direction for those. But I know it's possible. It should be possible through ClaimMD. Great. Thanks for jumping in there, Sarah. Um, you also mentioned Ability as well. That's actually, uh, uh, again, another clearinghouse that you can utilize with Jane or just another clearinghouse in general. And that's the other kind of bonus with ClaimMD as well, where they're able to kind of submit to other clearinghouses on your behalf, who in turn will submit to whichever payers that you need. So if you're kind of going over the payer list with ClaimMD and seeing that the payers that you do utilize or insurers that you do bill towards may not show up in that list, chances are still that ClaimMD would still be able to kind of support you. So never fear, just kind of reach out to them directly if you're interested with ClaimMD and um, they'll more than likely be able to kind of confirm for you that they can support those particular insurers, even though it's not particularly listed on their payer list there. All right. Um, here are some hot tips here for you um, where, you know, uh, Sarah has actually graciously kind of provided these tips. So I'll let her actually take this away. Awesome. Thanks, Earl. So a um, couple tips when it comes to completing those enrollments is make sure you fill them out based on how you're enrolled with that insurance company. So some great examples, I'm going to use um, like a chiropractor, for example. Chiropractors are actually enrolled with United Healthcare as individuals. Um, so whenever you complete that enrollment form, it's important to put your individual name and individual MPI on there. Um, and then it gives you the option to aggregate it by tax ID. So that way, if you know you have four providers in your office and you aggregate it by tax ID, they'll all still come in under the office name. Um, another great example would be like Blue Cross. Many people are enrolled with Blue Cross as a group. So you're gonna wanna put your group name and group NPI. The common confusion that we find here is those applications or forms that are on ClaimMD or really any clearinghouse will say provider name, provider MPI. Uh, keeping in mind that provider is very generic. So if you're enrolled as a group and it says provider name, it's actually asking for your clinic name, not your individual provider name. Um, so that's one, one really important um, step to make sure to be mindful of. And if you're not sure, you're, like if you're a provider completing the enrollments yourself and you're not sure, you could always complete it for both. One will get rejected, one will get approved, and then at least they go through. Um, and then another hot tip that we have is creating your own tracking sheet using the claim MD payer list. Um, I think I actually touch a little bit more on the next slide about that, but uh, what's super important is to note that 
those enrollments while you submit them, you're going to be responsible for following up on those. Um, one more tip not listed on here was without the EDI enrollments activated in your clearinghouse, your claims will likely get denied or you'll have unsuccessful submission or payout. So those EDI enrollments, like Earl mentioned earlier, allow you to submit your claims. A lot of those EDI enrollments um, require you to sign up. Typically, it's Medicare, Medicaid that require those. Um, there are a couple one-off ones, like I think Health Partners of Minnesota is a weird one that requires it. So I would check by your state. But when you do those EDI enrollments, usually they will send you an approval or a denial when those are accepted. And like Medicare in particular, you actually have to contact ClaimMD and let them know that was approved. ClaimMD does something on their back end to lift it so that it doesn't send out on paper and then lets it, lets it send electronically. So a common mistake we see is people complete those enrollments, get the successful and just start submitting and they don't actually successfully submit out because they didn't do that one last step of contacting ClaimMD. Um, and those two, when you guys do those enrollments, those uh, instructions are listed on the bottom of those enrollment forms too on whatever clearinghouse you're going through. Um, if you wanna go to the next slide, Earl. Of course. Perfect. Um, kind of back to that last bullet point was keeping a comprehensive list of your EDI and ERA enrollments. Um, and then kind of when they're supposed to be complete and their turnaround time. So um, super important with that is um, the form that you complete the enrollment on, it'll usually say like, hey, this has a seven to 14 day turnaround. If you're not getting your ERAs back in seven to 14 days, you're gonna want to call or follow up with customer service, wherever it says on the bottom of that form, because sometimes we notice that they will reject those enrollments, but not notify you. So super important to follow up with those because if there's something wrong, obviously you wanna get it corrected so that you can resubmit the form. Um, a couple hot tips, these are pretty Medicare dependent here. So anybody that takes um, Medicare, your MAC administrator um, varies per state. I, I should have looked this up, but I think there's like seven, six or seven of them in the US. So if you ask somebody from another state a question about Medicare, they may be referring to Meridian when your state has Navitas. So um, super important to make sure you're dealing with the right MAC provider. More often than not, Medicare requires you to log into your Medicare portal to do those enrollments as well for both EDI and ERA. Um, and then for those enrollments, like I mentioned, you need an EDI and an ERA enrollment for Medicare because um, Medicare does not accept paper claims. I believe there's one tiny section somewhere in Pennsylvania that we have found still accepts paper claims somehow, but the rest of the U.S. does not. So um, I highly recommend just doing them anyways, because of course, faster turnaround times too, um, when we're not submitting things on paper. Um, so the when it comes to doing your EDI enrollments to allow you to submit those Medicare claims, um, those are really the biggest claims that you're going to need to hold. So if you don't have your EDI enrollment complete, you're not going to want to send claims out of that clearinghouse because you'll get a bunch of rejections. Um, however, as soon as you sign up for the other, um, like for your clearinghouse, you should be able to submit the rest of your claims. You're just waiting on those ERI enrollments in order to get the electronic EOBs back in there. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you for those hot tips there, Sarah. Yeah. Um, in terms of the uh, MAC providers there, if you folks don't know who that is for your state, um, we'll provide you links again in, in our kind of follow-up documents that will take you to a page where you can kind of look things up per state. And that will list out, you know, if you have Noridia in your state versus Novitas in your state, for example. Um, I saw a little chat here from Rinku where they specifically ask if uh, there's anything specific you want to track with enrollments. Uh, it re really is kind of going back to this page in terms of the tracking sheet. The main information we would kind of recommend for you to put in there would be just uh, when you would expect to get um, word back from um, each kind of payer you're enrolling for, which again, they'll, they'll list that when you complete that particular form. Um, this can take anywhere between five to 30 business days there, just depends on the uh, payer there and when they kind of get back to you with the approval. And then from there, as you know, Sarah just mentioned, you may have to even kind of reach out to ClaimMD or whichever clearinghouse you switch towards to make sure that they've approved things on their end as well after you get that approval through email uh, or what, however they choose to contact you. Um, so 
I would we'd, we'd recommend putting that information in that tracking sheet there for yourself. Uh, and then, you know, check that off whenever you get those approvals. Speaking of all that there, once you've got all those approvals, they've all kind of come in uh, and you've done your due diligence in terms of, you know, reaching out to ClaimMD or Clearinghouse if you need to get them to turn on some things on their end, then now you're all set to kind of use your new Clearinghouse. So, you know, amazing. Congratulations. You know, glad that we made it to this step. Um, that would be when you'd also want to fully stop uh, with submitting claims from your old clearinghouse there um, and, um, you know, fully kind of switching to that new clearinghouse. Again, just so you don't can, you know, cross any wires there, so to speak, and all your reporting looks accurate there. And you, you, you go to where you expect to find uh, all of your EOBs and things of that nature. And then the bonus too with claim MD again is just that all, all those EOBs and things like that, once you kind of get started with submitting, that's all automated right through Jane. So you don't actually have to leave the system compared to our non-integrated solutions with Office Ally, Trizetto, and Availity. So quick summary here. Really just um, keys to really successful switch there for clinics is uh, one is really making sure the clinic is very, very diligent with getting those EDI and ERA enrollments started as soon as possible. Again, it can take between five to 30 days for clinics to get approved. Uh, from there, we wanna make sure that these enrollments are being completed accurately. So as Sarah mentioned earlier, making sure that whatever credentials the clinic has now and when you switch towards a, a new clearinghouse. So maybe you move from being an individual provider versus being credentialed under a group kind of designation, making sure that you do all your um, enrollments with that designation in mind and ensuring that that's been also communicated towards your payers. Um, just gonna highlight this as well. I, I've heard many kind of stories uh, through my time and support here where clinics are getting all these rejections. They've kind of made a switch, but, um, and, and we're, we're trying to figure out exactly why, why this is happening since they're putting in all their credentials correctly. And then upon further investigation, it looks like they just haven't yet updated their credentials on the payer side, but um, they've kind of put in those uh, identifications and credentials in, in the Jane software there, which causes a, a disconnect and the insurer expects other details, which is why they're kind of rejecting the claim. So. We want to avoid that there for everyone. So, you know, make sure we're set up for success. Um, great. Uh, that's pretty much our um, chat here today. We've got lots of space here for um, questions and uh, Q and A's. So maybe we will take some, take some questions in chat here before we kind of chat with Bushido. Um, Let's One that I saw come through, and I apologize, we may have answered this right when you typed it, but if not, um, one of the questions was, are there anything specific you track with enrollments? So I have an Excel spreadsheet, and I type out all the clinic, or not clinic, <laughs> the uh, payer names that I do the enrollments with. So basically, I, I pull up my insured list in Jane, make sure I enroll in all those in ClaimMD, and then we put um, the date that they should be approved or about how long it takes. So, you know, if I enroll on it on 11-1, it says it takes seven business days. Um, I'll put like follow up 11-10 or whatever. Um, and then on that date, if I don't start seeing ERAs come in, that's when I would call and follow up on and make notes next to it. As soon as I start seeing those ERAs come in, I just black out that line or hide it or whatever um, until all of those are done. So really kind of tracking those enrollments is just if they successfully processed and um, the date you should follow up because... As Earl mentioned, they could take five days or 30 days. Everyone kind of varies there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll answer this question here from Michelle in chat where uh, they ask, uh, you know, how is run out handled for older claims that were submitted through the previous clearinghouse? I'm assuming by run out here, Michelle, you mean kind of the EOBs or the EO, ERAs that kind of come in uh, after submitting from your previous clearinghouse. Um, assuming that you are or are using kind of Jane uh, with that previous cooling house there, kind of uh, submitting claims from 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 us, uh, then you, you'd still follow the same old steps that you you are currently right now, where you'll have to kind of open up that 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 clearing house and then download the ERAs from them uh, up until you, you start just not receiving any. So you may you may kind of have to keep uh, your old clearing house open for for a little bit, uh, maybe you know. 15 days to, to 30 days there up until, you know, all, all claims that are previously submitted have been accounted for and you receive EOBs for, and you can kind of upload that. Hopefully that answers your question. 
Another question that came rolling in is, our office is in Colorado. Is that meant we're enrolled through Medicare to Navitas? Is that correct? And yes, so your um, your MAC provider is Navitas. Also keeping in mind that some Medicare, I don't have the Navitas one in front of me, some Medicare ones require you to fill it out on their website and a form. So just reading through those instructions to see if maybe there was a two-step process or something like that that needs done. Awesome, perfect. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Rinku here, your, your question, just so everyone can see it, is um, they're asking if there's a simultaneous EDI enrollment. Can you do that uh, with the previous clearinghouse and claim and be during your transition? Um, so to clarify, you should already be fully enrolled with your previous clearinghouse. That's um, that's why the clinic is able to kind of send off those claims to that previous clearinghouse and receive ERAs. Um, but while you're doing that there or in the process of switching your clearinghouse to claim MD, that's when you'd want to do your EDI enrollments there as well, which essentially is just letting your your payers know that, hey guys, I'm going to be switching from my current clearinghouse here towards claim MD. Could you please approve this? So um, you know where expect these files to come from. Um, so that can happen simultaneously there. And then once again, you get the approval, then that's when you can make that switch. I don't see the question here, but I do want to share one common um, question that we get is from when you sign up, and I kind of mentioned this in the uh, webinar earlier, but when you sign up for that clearinghouse, can you submit claims or do you need to wait? A lot of people want that clear cut transition. And when it comes to transitioning clearinghouses, it's it's really hard to have that clear cut transition unless you're just going to hold your claims for weeks. Um, so from the moment you can sign up, aside from your EDI enrollments like Medicare, Medicaid, you can submit claims that day for your Blue Cross, United Healthcare, all those insurances. Um, so it's not like you're waiting, you know, two, three weeks to hear back. You may have to wait two, three weeks to get your UOBs back, but you could theoretically start submitting um, right away. And one other common question that we get to is um, EFT forms. A lot of people want to know. Um, if you guys weren't aware, you can actually, a lot of the insurance companies have their EFT forms attached to their ERA enrollment forms. Not all of them have it, but if you guys are looking at going EFT, um, probably checking the same location as those ERA enrollments um, would be a good start because it might just be knocking them out two for one there. I was also going to say, um, if you don't have a question, because oftentimes questions pop up hours later as we're doing whatever we're doing with our lives, um, we will be posting a discussion thread in the group later on today. So if you have feedback, if you want to go over a specific topic in another webinar, we'd love to hear from you, um, what you thought about today and anything, maybe any other questions you have. Um, so again, I'll post that uh, up in our US community group today. Um, and again, I'll post the info below, but if you're not already in our community groups, come join us.